Hey everybody, welcome to the 15th episode of California Wine TV. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm your host Scott Sheldon. It's a pleasure to be here. So for episode 15, I'm going to do a Pinot Noir battle, Santa Maria Showdown. Got two Pinot Noirs from the Santa Maria Valley, both right around the $20 price range. I'm going to go head to head and see what happens. So for you guys who don't know, the origin of Pinot Noir comes from the Burgundy region of France about 2,000 years ago. It's kind of a fickle grape, it's hard to grow. Um, some of the climates that it really likes to grow in have um, a lot of fluctuations of weather from one year to the next, and it's always challenging uh, different vintages for the winemakers to, uh, you know, to really get a grasp on it, and it's been called the heartbreak grape because of that. Uh, Santa Maria Valley, a really interesting Pinot Noir region. The valley runs east-west, so the air coming from the Pacific Ocean funnels right through the valley. Because of that, it is the coolest wine-growing region in California. And basically the harvest, on average, lasts about four months longer, creates like a slower maturation process and longer hang time for the grapes. First wine we got here today is coming from the Byron Winery, started by Ken Brown in 84. School was to make exquisite Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. At that point, Chardonnay was pretty established as a uh, great varietal in California. Pinot Noir, people were still experimenting with it a little bit, um, growing it sometimes in the wrong region, like hotter regions in Napa that are more suited towards uh, Cabernet Sauvignon, for example. Um, but um, this is really a great region that uh, he found. And this actually, uh, some of these vineyards, um, were planted by um, Uriel Nielsen in 64, the first commercial vineyards in Santa Barbara County. So let's give this a shot, see what happens. Ripe cherries coming off the nose. Pretty aromatic. There's some floral hints too. A little bit of rose and violet coming through. A little bit of spice like cinnamon and clove. A little, little bit of oak. A little bit smoky as well. There's also kind of like a uh, like a woodsy, earthy, you know, kind of like a mushroom thing kind of going on in there. It's got a nice nose, nice and balanced. Uh, smells really nice. Let's uh, go ahead and give it a taste. Bright acidity to the swine, um, good concentration, very juicy fruit coming through, uh, certainly right on the front end of the swine, kind of like a juicy ripe cherry plum uh, fruit going on. Very silky mouthfeel. It really kind of layers your tongue. Um, and again, that kind of earthy characteristic that I was mentioning and the aroma carries through uh, and the taste on my palate. I can kind of taste that earthy, toasty. Kind of a smokiness to it as well. Good. Um, fine tannins, not overbearing. Very good balance of the oak, the tannins, the fruit. Um, I think this wine had about almost a year in French oak, about 25% new. And um, it's a combination of older and younger fruit. But overall, good job on this wine, Byron, I would say. Let's uh, move on to the next one. Let's just shuffle some things around here. All right. 
So, uh, wine number two coming from uh, Lane Tanner. Excuse me. A little sip of water here. So, you know, wine labels are a curious thing. Um, some of them are very simple, some of them uh, get quite artistic. And on the back of them, also, it's very, un very interesting. Um, sometimes you see uh, people where it's almost like a spreadsheet on the back. I mean, it basically has the residual sugar and the, the elevation. And I mean, it's, bas it's almost like a lab report on, um, on some of these bottles on the back of them. And um, other times, they're, they're rather simple. This wine, for example, this has a very simple uh, slogan on the back. This is a wine to score with. <laughs> That's all it says. Um, no other information really than it was uh, produced and bottled in Santa Maria, California for 13.4% alcohol, 2008, uh, Lane Tanner. And um, Lane Tanner is this woman who started this winery uh, back in the day, I'm not exactly sure when. Um, she's been called uh, the Bet Mil Bet Midler in a Bottle. I'm not exactly sure what that means, but um, maybe it's before my time or something. I'm not sure. Um, let's give this a shot, though. Um, similar in color to the first wine. It kind of has that a ruby, kind of bright ruby color. Not a lot happening on the nose right off the bat, I'll tell you that much. Um, let's, give it, let's give it a swirl. You know, sometimes if you're having trouble really smelling the wine, it's good to kind of give it a swirl, sit here, get some of the uh, aromatics to try to come out of the wine. Well, this wine is all about the fruit. You got bright cherry uh, coming right off the nose. There's also an interesting characteristic of kind of like a lemon peel uh, thing going on, um, but really uh, no oak on the nose at all that I can really smell. Um, not very aromatic, like I said. Let's give it a taste. Hmm. Well, like I said on the smell, or the aroma, it, the taste is no different. It's definitely all about the fruit here. Uh, medium acidity. Um, I would say it's, it's kind of on the dry side. It's fruity, not very complex. It's um, got kind of a weak finish actually uh, to this wine. Let's, um, let's give it another taste. See if I can get something else out of this. The tannins are really, really just subdued. And um, it's hard to believe that this wine, I think, had like 11 months French oak, about 30% new, something like that. Um, I don't know, I got really uh, nothing else to say on this one. Let's rank them up. All right, Byron, I would say 89 points on this wine. I'd say in the $20 price range for Pinot Noir. Um, yeah, I'd recommend it probably. You guys would probably enjoy it. Um, you could definitely do worse in that price range. And um, it's got some interesting characteristics to it. I definitely like the earthiness that it has, the smokiness. Um, it's not all about the fruit, which unfortunately in the kind of $20 and below price range with the California Pinots, you got a lot of them that are just all about the fruit and really don't have very much else going on in terms of complexity or other dimensions um, in, in the flavor profile. So I'd say 89 points on this wine. Lane Tanner, um, disappointment. I would say 84 points on this wine. I would not recommend it. Uh, $20, you could certainly find a lot of Pinot Noirs in this price range that uh, be worth uh, spending your money on instead. So. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this show. Um, you want to check uh, these wineries out on the web, byronwines.com, uh, lanetanner.com. And um, I hope you guys check out the website. Go to californiawine.com, excuse me, californiawinetv.com. Um, hit me up on Twitter, Scott Sheldon at Twitter, um, Facebook, 
California Wine TV on Facebook. Um, please, I want to hear your feedback. I want to know uh, what can I do to make the show better? What wines can we review on the show for you? Um, you know, what can I do to help? What can I do for you guys? I want to be a service and I want to try to make the show better um, as much as I can. So anyhow, I hope to hear from you guys. I hope you really enjoyed the show. Until next time, you guys take care. I'll see you then.